One more thing about inverses that is worthy of noting is that it is the property of inverses that when you compose a function with its inverse, you get back x. Because remember, what does an inverse do? An inverse reverses the operation. Say, so, oh, similarly, an inverse composed with the original function gives you back x. So we're going to look at a couple of examples just to show that this property holds for inverses. So suppose we're given the question, we want to find the inverse function for f of x equals x cubed minus 1. So f to the minus 1, remember that's a notation for inverse function. And uh, we're assuming that this is 1 to 1, because remember you can only find inverses of 1 to 1 functions. It is 1 to 1. If you made a quick sketch of x cubed minus 1, x cubed minus 1 is the cubic function moved down 1. So x cubed minus 1 looks like this and certainly a horizontal line would only intersect it in one place so it is 1 to 1 therefore its inverse is a function as well and what does its inverse look like? so to find the inverse we take y equals x cubed minus 1 and we interchange the variables so we have x equals y cubed minus 1 and we solve for y add 1 to both sides, x plus 1 equals y cubed and then I cube root both sides to get to the y so therefore y is equal to the cube root of x plus 1 so that is my inverse function so my inverse function is f inverse of x is the cube root of x plus 1 so we know the domain and range are switched. The domain and range of this function tends is all reals for both, and therefore the domain and range of this function is all reals. Let's look at how this looks on the graph. So we're graphing these two. We have x cubed minus 1, my function, and cube root of x plus 1 as my inverse function. And notice that they're a reflection of each other across that line y equals x. And also, here's the y-intercept on my original function at negative 1. That y-intercept becomes the x-intercept of negative 1 for my inverse function. So one property we want to show that when we compose these two functions, we should get back x. So let's do that. So f, of, f inverse of x means f composed with f inverse of x. And that means you substitute f inverse into f. So if we do that, what are we going to have? Well, we're going to have f of the cube root of x plus 1, because that's the inverse function, cube root of x plus 1. And what that says now is substitute this cube root of x plus 1 into my original function for x. So, so in other words, we're going to cube this, because it says x cubed. We're going to cube this and subtract 1. So this is what we get. So the cube root of x plus 1, cube minus 1. But when you cube a cube root, they just cancel out. So what we're going to left, be left with is x plus 1, because these cube root and cube cancel out, minus 1. So x plus 1 minus 1 gives me x. And so yes, it does satisfy that property of an inverse. When you compose the function with the inverse, you get back x. So similarly, if you compose f inverse with f, you will get x. So what for, as a practice, you can try showing that if I do f inverse of f of x, I should also get, I should also get x. So you can try doing that on your own.